Year after year, cities like London, Paris, Rome, and Amsterdam welcome an unfathomable number of travelers. And while I think these places are wonderful and totally worth visiting, there are many other places you can go that are way cheaper and, in my opinion, highly underrated. So, in this video, we're gonna break down five underrated European cities that won't break the bank. Hey guys, Nick here from Away Together. My wife, Allie, and I have had the fortune of visiting so many wonderful places throughout our travels. And my hope with this video is simply to pass on what have become some of our absolute favorite places throughout Europe, some hidden gems, if you will. We still can't believe how much we fell in love with all of these, but especially the last two. Let's dive in. Let's kick things off with Budapest, Hungary. Nestled in the heart of Central Europe, Budapest is Hungary's vibrant, and dynamic capital. Known for its stunning architecture, rich history, and eclectic nightlife, it's a city that has something for every type of traveler. And it offers great value for money as well with the price of accommodation and the affordability of food. It's bisected by the mighty Danube River and it's an exciting blend of two distinctive parts, Buda and Pest. Budapest sprawls. It's pretty large and it has several distinct districts, but navigating the city is a breeze thanks to its excellent public transportation system. As a city, it's very well connected. You know, it may not beat a place like Berlin or Vienna, let's say, with its public transportation, but it is great and it's quite affordable. Here's a travel tip for you. Consider getting a 72-hour pass, which grants you unlimited access to metros, buses, trams, and even boats, which just makes it really easy to explore the city. One of the city's undeniable highlights is the Hungarian Parliament Building. Located on the Pest side of the Danube, this stunning neo-Gothic building is the third largest parliament building in the world and an iconic part of the Budapest skyline. If you head over to District 7, the Jewish area, you'll find the famous ruin pubs, which are basically abandoned, dilapidated buildings that have been turned into bars. We went to probably the most famous one, Simpla Kurt, I believe is how you say it. We had a nice bite to eat, enjoyed some beers, and met some really cool people. One of the coolest things to do in Budapest is to visit the thermal baths. Soaking in thermal baths is super popular in Budapest and it's an activity that dates back to Roman times. There's so many spas to choose from in Budapest, but the one that we visited was the Seycheny Baths, which is the largest medicinal bath in Europe. It was a lot of fun. So many different baths to choose from, varying temperatures, some indoors, some outdoors. And uh, pro tip, don't forget a towel. I know from personal experience, you will pay a crazy amount of money for a towel. There's so much more to do and see in Budapest than I can cover here, but let's head a few hours westward to the capital of Slovenia, Ljubljana. Ljubljana may be one of Europe's smallest capital cities, but it's brimming with charm and character. The great thing about Ljubljana is its walkability. This compact city is so pedestrian friendly that you can explore most of its major attractions by foot in just a day or two. Something I thought was really awesome is the city's mascot is the dragon. You'll see it popping up all over the place from the iconic dragon bridge to the city's coat of arms. Like how cool is that? I don't know what your city's mascot is, but mine isn't anywhere near as cool as the dragon. The city had such a cool vibe, especially in the old town area. We loved the cafe culture lining the river. Food and drinks are surprisingly affordable here. We actually filmed an entire food tour of a full day of eating in Ljubljana. You can find that linked up here somewhere. One thing you've got to try is the honey. Slovenia has more beekeepers per capita than any other country in the world. So be sure to sample some locally produced honey. We went to this honey shop called Honey House and they had all kinds of goodies for us to try. This next recommendation isn't for everyone, but you can also get a horse burger in Ljubljana. There's a place called Hot Horse, and I'm not gonna lie, I loved it. Sorry, mom. One of our favorite things about Ljubljana was the accommodations. We stayed in two different places in Ljubljana and they could not have been more different. The first was a place called Hostel Selica, which is really unique. It's a former military prison that's been transformed into a hostel and each of the private rooms are actually in old cells. If you're an IHG member, you should definitely use your anniversary night on the Intercontinental Ljubljana. It provides tremendous redemption value and is one of Ali's favorite hotel stays ever. 
This next city I can confidently say I probably wouldn't have ended up in if we didn't need a clever way to spend more than 90 days in Europe. Like a few places on this list, this country is not part of Europe's Schengen region and therefore doesn't count against your 90 day limit you can spend on the European continent. Long intro to a really wonderful and relaxing place, Paphos, Cyprus. Located on the island's southwestern coast, Paphos is a place where you can immerse yourself in rich history and archeology span one day and relax by the beautiful Mediterranean Sea the next. Paphos is famous for its archeological sites, many of which are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Be sure to visit the Paphos Archaeological Park, where you'll find well-preserved Roman villas with stunning mosaic floors and the Odeon, a small amphitheater still used for performances today. Not too far from there, you'll find the Tombs of the Kings, which is an ancient necropolis with underground tombs dating back to the fourth century BC. Another must-see is Aphrodite's Rock, where in Greek mythology, Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, was born. And it's a pretty short drive from Paphos. One thing I loved doing was driving through the Trudos Mountains. We strung together our own little winery tour, and you could also hire a local guide to do this for you, but it's pretty easy to research online if you have a car. And we haven't even touched on the food yet. Greek Cypriot cuisine is a gastronomic delight. From the grilled halloumi cheese to souvlaki, moussaka, and the meze spreads, my all-time favorite discovery, zucchini balls. The food here is fresh, flavorful, and incredibly satisfying. One of the simple pleasures of being in Paphos was just taking a walk or a run along the coastal boardwalk. This was an area where we actually came to take a break. We've been traveling nonstop for like five months, and we came to Cyprus just to slow down, catch our breath. It was so peaceful. You know, we're not big beach people, so if you were really interested in laying on the beach, you may want to check out Larnaca in Cyprus instead. But for us, just being near the sea and kind of taking it slow for a few days was exactly what the doctor ordered. I think Paphos offers a winning blend of history, culture, nature, and food. It's perfect for travelers looking for a laid back yet culturally rich holiday experience. Hey, real quick, if you're getting value out of this video, I would love it if you'd hit that like button so YouTube will know to suggest it to other travelers like you. Thank you. Let's venture now to a country that's been rising in popularity for the past decade, but to a city that's still highly underrated in my opinion. Zagreb, Croatia. In contrast to the coastal allure of Split or the old world charm of Dubrovnik, Croatia's capital Zagreb offers an equally enriching yet unique experience. Many tourists may bypass this inland city, but if you're looking for a less crowded and more authentic experience, Zagreb is the place. I was taken aback by how much I loved Zagreb. In terms of the city and the architecture, Zagreb blends that sort of Austro-Hungarian grandeur with a distinct Slavic feel. We loved just sitting and people watching in the central square. In terms of affordability, Zagreb is a really great value especially compared to the tourist prices that you're gonna pay in the coastal region. The food scene here is amazing. Ali actually designed a food tour in Zagreb and it was one of our earliest successful videos. The variety and the quality of the cuisine here was truly remarkable. One of the things we loved in Zagreb was the soup. All throughout Croatia, we loved the soups, but Zagreb was like the first place we found it. We ate several times on to Kalčačeva Street, I think is how you say it, which is known for its cafes, bars, and restaurants. One place we liked there was called Pivnica Mali Medo. Nice vibes, good food, and I remember the bread was really great. We also loved a spot near our Airbnb called Heritage Croatia. Tiny place, they didn't really have a whole lot of seats, but they specialized in artisan, local food and drink specific to Croatia. Those were some of the best bites we had our entire time in Zagreb. When it comes to sightseeing, Zagreb is home to an array of unique and interesting museums. The Museum of Broken Relationships is definitely a standout. It's this collection of objects from failed relationships donated by people from all around the world. Some were quite odd, some were really sad, and some were downright hilarious. Each item has a backstory that you can read as you're looking at it. So unique. One of the coolest museums I've ever been to. There's also a Nikola Tesla museum, which was very fun and educational. I love Zagreb because it's a real city. Yes, there's history. Yes, there are things to do and sites to see, but I really appreciated that there weren't a thousand sites I had to be sure to hit. It was just a cool place to be, and I could tell that 
real people live and work there. It was affordable, unpretentious, and real. Let's go on to another hidden gem, a place that Ali and I consider to be maybe the most underrated city we've ever visited. We're headed to Krakow, Poland. Krakow has this irresistible charm that just captivates you. Yes, it's one of Poland's most popular destinations, but it's still often overlooked by travelers who focus their itineraries on Western Europe. And I'll be honest, I never really had dreams of visiting Poland, but when we ended up there, I fell in love. The city of Krakow itself is beautiful. The old town has a well-preserved medieval core, great architecture, and a vibrant market square. We really loved the Cloth Market Hall, which is right in the center of the main square. It's packed with vendors selling a variety of items from souvenirs to local crafts. Krakow is also incredibly walkable and it has quaint streets and hidden corners. The food scene in Krakow took us by surprise. The portions were huge and the prices were remarkably low. Some dishes that we loved and still think about. Bigos, which is this hearty meat and cabbage stew. Crispy potato pancakes, and of course you cannot forget pierogi. We even took a cooking class to learn how to make our own pierogi, which was awesome. Our host Karina lived in the Jewish quarter and she welcomed us into her home. She taught us some history of the area and we made pierogi and even got to sample some local vodka, which was delicious. Krakow also has incredible historical significance. The Schindler Factory and Museum, if you've seen Schindler's List, this is Oscar Schindler's factory and you can tour it. Krakow is also only about an hour from the Auschwitz concentration camp. Both of these experiences are incredibly sobering, but I think they're very important in understanding our shared history. And if you're up for it, you should make an effort to go. Despite these reminders of a tumultuous past, Krakow remains a city of resilience and unending charm. We found ourselves enchanted by the energy and the warmth of this place. And we left Krakow with plans to come back. We loved it. Extremely livable and a place that we will definitely return to. I hope you enjoyed this list of what I consider to be five underrated places to visit throughout Europe. I recognize that some of these are pretty mainstream, especially if you live in Europe yourself, but there's a bunch of Americans, let me tell you, who have never heard of Ljubljana, okay? If you have a city that you think is a hidden gem that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments below because I wanna go there. And if you wanna explore any of these places I mentioned today further, we actually created vlogs of each of them. You can check out a playlist of those here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy travels.